So today I want to talk about someone who uh, I think has had a great effect on agent-based modeling and uh, definitely has a great effect on me since he was my advisor, uh, which is John Holland. And uh, John unfortunately passed away uh, last summer, but he uh, has really left a big impact on the field. Uh, so let's go back to where it started, right? So John uh, was inspired by Hebb's ideas about neurons and Rosenblatt's work on the perceptron. And these ideas were ideas about how you could think of the brain as a computational entity and how it could uh, uh, com compute, right? And so uh, Rosenblatt built the perceptron model, uh, which was actually the foundational model for neural networks, right? Um, and Hebb's 1949 organization of behavior kind of led the groundwork for thinking about how neurons uh, might be used to structure a computational brain, right? And based upon those ideas, Holland realized, you know, these are interesting because they're actually adaptive models, right? They're showing how not only something can take inputs and create outputs, but how they can change over time to adapt to the system around them. And that's the real big point I'm gonna, there's a lot of great things John Holland did, but this is the point I wanna bring out today is I wanna talk a lot about ad adaptation in agents, which is something I think Holland really was a big contributor in. Um, so based upon his thoughts along this line, so he decided to think about, well, what about the evolutionary adaptive process, right? Uh, and so in 1975, he published the book Adaptation in Our Journal and Artificial Systems, which essentially laid the groundwork for the genetic algorithm, right? And the genetic algorithm, uh, which is something I'll, I'll actually show you an example of in the next video lecture, uh, essentially takes a population of solutions to a problem evaluates that and then creates a new population using evolutionary principles in much the way, same way evolution evolves the population of a, a biological system, right? Um, but Helen was, you know, as he was working on this and doing some great work in this, really kind of founded the field of genetic algorithms in many sense. Um, he uh, was also influenced by uh, Arthur Samuel's work on checkers. So Arthur Samuel had started doing some work on developing a computer algorithm to play checkers. And in that algorithm, he basically used the notion of uh, a, a notion of reinforcement learning, actually something that's still used today in some cases of things like um, uh, where you have these n deep neural nets that are playing games against each other in order to solve problems. But Holland wanted to think about how could you use how Samuel's work in combination with the genetic algorithms to create systems that could adapt to playing complex games, right? To create adaptive agents. Um, so while he was thinking about this in the early uh, 1980s, 1985, mid 1980s, he became involved in the Santa Fe Institute, which uh, is where we are taking this course right now, right? And in September of 1987, he presented some of his ideas about adaptive agents at a meeting um, at the Santa Fe Institute of the Economy as a Complex Adaptive System. And partially as a response, a response to that, he started working with people like Brian Arthur, Blake LeBaron, Richard Palmer, and Paul Taylor to create the Santa Fe artificial stock market, right? Which was one of the first attempts to kind of embody everything that happens in a stock market within an artificial simulation of that stock market, right? Uh, and in August of uh, 1986, uh, partially as a response to some of the, the some of the problems they were seeing, John Reed, who was CEO of the Citicorp, met with at Santa Fe with Kent Arrow, Brian Arthur, and John Howland, along with some other SFI researchers, to think about new ways to model economics. And in fact, that led to Swarm, right, which was one of the first agent-based modeling languages, right? And it was really because the, all these great thinkers who are at SFI realized that we needed to start thinking about different ways to model economic systems in order to really move forward. Uh, following on the tails of that, in 1991, John Miller and John Holland published a paper uh, called Artificial, Adaptation, Adapta Artificial Ad Adaptive Agents in Economic Theory, uh, which in many ways was one of the first papers to use the word agent in the current sense that we need it. Um, and a lot of this work was actually inspired and, you know, by, the, by the person who I'm picturing here, which is Herbert Simon. Herbert Simon's work uh, really talked about a notion of something called bounded rationality. And the idea was that a lot of traditional neoclassical economics is built upon this idea 
that we have these agents or these entities that can make infinite decisions about um, the world around them, right? And Herbert said, you know, that's not the case. That, that the truth of the matter is, is people have a small amount of time they can to make a decision about something, and that time frame is rather short. And so they really, we really need to think about boundedly rational solutions rather than these, um, these uh, overall uh, perfect solutions that might exist, right? Um, and so, uh, while all this was happening, John was obviously, he wasn't at the Santa Fe full time, he was also spending time back in Michigan, which is where his home department was, uh, and he be, helped found a group of researchers at Michigan known as the Bach Group, which originally composed of Arthur Burks, who we've talked about previously, uh, Robert Axelrod, Michael Cohen, and John Holland. And Robert Axelrod, you might uh, really have heard of at some point along the way, really developed uh, the notion of the tit-for-tat and the prisoner's dilemma studies that really went on, right? And those are, in many ways, also agent-based models, right? You have two agents playing a game uh, of cooperation or defection against each other. And Michael Cohen goes on to write papers on, uh, uh, with some of his colleagues on uh, the garbage can model of organizational choice, which is, in effect, a, an agent-based model. Uh, and uh, Michael and I had a, had a chance to chat about that before uh, he passed away. And he said that at the time, he would have used agent-based modeling as a framework to build it. It's just that they didn't have that term at the time. right? This group also inspired two prominent graduate students who continue and continue to work in this space, right? Melanie Mitchell, who teaches actually another course here at the SFI on um, the introduction of complexity. Um, and Melanie, you know, built upon some of the work that uh, John and the, and the other group members were doing to really think about adaptive agents uh, in the cellular automata space. And she actually used genetic algorithms to show that you could evolve cellular automata solutions to really hard uh, CA problems, right? And then you could solve these problems uh, fairly well, uh, among many other things that Melanie has done. But in this particular case, the, in, with the space of adaptive agents, that's a big uh, aspect of it. And Stephanie Forrest used the notion of adaptation and agents to start to think about artificial immune systems. So these are systems that you can construct within a computer in order to protect that computer against viruses and other uh, defects in the software. And she's also gone on to think about it in the case of building software that can automatically repair itself uh, to uh, defects and bugs that might be in those systems. Right? Now, following upon all this work, I think really the area in which Howland really hit his stride in terms of uh, adaptations is the, um, the is starting to develop the idea of the classifier system. Uh, and in the classifier system, Howland really kind of uh, realizes that what you have is you have this ability to chain together rules, right? So you have one rule that can look at the world around you and create a signal. And then you can have another rule that activates because of that signal, not because of the world around you. And then you have another rule that can chain upon that, right? And, these, and they can take multiple inputs. So maybe the second rule actually looks at multiple different rules, right? And he created this ability to classify things and entities on a set of a whole bunch of rules. And he developed what was called uh, the, the bucket brigade algorithm to pass back kind of the appropriate incentives for each of those rules based upon when they fired, right? Working on this led to the idea of a world where never-ending novelty could evolve. And he really wanted to develop this idea of you could have agents who are moving through a world potentially using classifier systems to process and develop um, resources in the world. And he created a set of suite of models, not just one model, but a suite of models called the Echo Models. Um, and these models were described in a Stanislaw Ulam lecture, another name you heard from a previous video lecture, uh, at the SFI, uh, which eventually became a book called Hidden Order, right? Uh, and so this kind of gives you an idea of like, where, so how does this all have to do? Well, a lot of these ideas around adaptive agents continue to persist in um, the work we're doing in agent-based modeling today, right? 
So if you look back to the original idea about evolving solutions, right, we still see genetic algorithms as a big component, right, that these systems are evolving there. If you look back to some of the earliest work on economic modeling, right, the notions of bounded rationality um, and, and inductive reasoning are something that, you know, was brought out really from the adaptive, adaptive agent work done in the 80s, right? If you look at the Bach group and the work that was done there, right, there are all these ideas about how to use agent-based models, adaptive agents in specific, to solve different problems that we see around this. So in many ways, Holland's kind of work on adaptive agents over the course of his lifetime uh, really is a legacy that's with us today in the agent-based modeling world.